Hello students, welcome to Legacy IIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about recently unveiled India's future strategy on emission that has been unveiled by the Union Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Mr. Bhupendra Singh, in the ongoing Conference of Parties meeting, the 27th edition of Conference of Parties meeting under the umbrella of United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change that has been going on in the Sarab al Sheikh region of the Egypt. So, the first of all, if you talk about this particular climate conference, it was to end on Friday. However, the deadline has to be extended to the weekend because there were a lot of divisions among developed countries and developing countries regarding what should be the final text or outcome of the agreement. So, it is during this time, India has unveiled its much awaited long term low emission development strategies and several outstanding issues, however, still remain. That is an issue of contention between the developed world and the developing world. So, we are this, we in this particular video, we are also going to talk about those as well. So, first of all, if we try to understand the background of this particular emission target or emission strategies, this basically traces back to the Paris Agreement that happened in year 2015, again uh, within the Conference of Parties meeting of the, uh, the 25th, 21st session of the Conference of Parties meeting under UNCC. And it is during the Paris Agreement, all the parties have decided that each country individually will come up with an emission target and also will come up with a long-term emission strategy and how we can control the rise of global temperature and thus, thus can uh, we can say minimize the effect of global warming as well as climate change. So, India has committed to being net zero by 2070. As far as the carbon emission is concerned, India has given the target that by year 2070s, it will be a net zero emitter. That means the amount of carbon it is releasing will be similar as the amount of carbon it is absorbing in different forms. And by doing so, India has joined a group of 60 countries. To remind you, as far as the Paris Agreement is concerned, there are over 190 signatories, but only 60 countries have submitted an independent and individual proposal in the same area. So India has becoming India is becoming a member of one of the 60 countries and have submitted a strategy document to the United Nations. Now, if we talk about the low emission strategy that has been unveiled by India, it hinges on total nine different themes on nine different parameters. The first theme is that India has said that it will focus on use of nuclear power and hydrogen as critical to transition. When we refer to transition, we are basically focusing upon moving from a fossil fuel dependency to a fossil fuel independence. That means we are moving from the dirty source of uh, fuel to the cleaner source of fuel. So in that regard, the use of nuclear power and hydrogen is going to be critical for the transition of India. Second, the Union Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change have also given a statement that India has a right to an equitable and fair share of the global carbon budget. And also since our goal to prevent a global temperature rise up to 0, 2 degrees Celsius, and even to limit it up to 1.5 degrees Celsius, it has to take place by the end of this century. That means by year 2100. It is a very long term goal spanning over almost half a century. And that is why this should be evolutionary and flexible in nature and has to take into account the new technological development that can happen in future or on which the currently work is also ongoing. Then apart from that, it also has been unveiled that India will try to maximize the use of electrical vehicles. And as we have discussed, many such programs have already been launched where the government is trying or attempting to increase the sale of electrical vehicles in the overall pool of the vehicles in India. Not only that, it also has said that as far as ethanol blending program of India is concerned, it will try to increase its percentage from 10 to 20 percent as far as the blending with petrol is concerned in the coming one decade. And the India's transition will strongly hinge upon the strong shift of passenger and freight vehicles toward public transportation. Then coming to the next point, the minister has, minister has says that there will be focus on improving energy efficiency, especially of fossil fuel dependent industries by focusing upon the PAT scheme that is also called as Perform, Achieve and Trade scheme. We'll discuss about that in a while. Second, the focus will also be on the success of National Hydrogen Mission that has been unveiled by the Prime Minister Modi in year 2021. And not only that, the focus will also be in increasing the electrification and enhancing the material efficiency in the cycling so that overall impact on the uh, carbon budget and overall impact on the environment can be minimized. So let us try to understand what is the path on the most important parameter of India's uh, transition to the uh, fossil fuel independent status. So PAT basically refers to a scheme that has been uh, uh, going on since year 2012 and it is the Ministry of Power that has been given the 
uh, and the Ministry of Power is the one that actually tackles the PAT scheme. So under this particular scheme, it is a kind of emission trading scheme. And in this particular emission trading scheme, industries, especially industries such as aluminum industry, fertilizer industry, and RNG industry, industry, which are extremely carbon intensive in nature, which actually emits a large amount, large volume of carbons, they have to necessarily or mandatorily reduce their emissions by a fixed amount. And if they are able to do so, it is well and good. But if they fail to reduce their emission by a particular fixed amount, in that case, they'll have to buy energy saving certificates from those industries, from those organizations that already have exceeded reduction target. For example, let us try to understand this. Suppose there is industry A, or uh, we can say an organization A, who has been given target of reducing the carbon emission by 100 gigaton. But in this particular year, this industry were able to reduce carbon emission, emission only by 80 gigaton. And then there is, we have another industry that has been also given target to reduce the emission by 100 gigaton. But in this particular year, this company has reduced the emission by 120 gigaton. So since the company A has failed to mandatorily reduce their emission, now they can buy energy saving certificate from this firm B, which has exceeded the target of reduction that was given to it. So in that way, we will also be incentivizing those industries which are exceeding their limit of carbon emission. So that is the main goal or objective uh, behind the PAT scheme. Also, if we talk about as per the recent data that has been released by the Ministry of Power, it has says that by using or utilizing this scheme, almost 60 million tons of CO2 has been prevented so far from being emitted. So, so far, the scheme seems to be very successful in tackling the carbon emission. Second, we have discussed the main hinge on which the emission strategy lies upon is the success of National Hydrogen Mission. So, National Hydrogen Mission was a mission that was unveiled by Prime Minister Modi last year, which is given a total budget of almost 1500 rupees for the development of renewable energy. And the main goal of National Hydrogen Mission is to promote and help the production of clean fuel as well as reducing the pollution to a large extent in this particular manner. Now the question comes that the recent strategy that has been unveiled by India in this particular summit, how is it different from NDC that is nationally determined contribution that India already has submitted uh, under the uh, Paris uh, agreement that has happened in 2015. So first of all, if we talk about NDCs, NDCs refer to voluntary commitments that countries have made so they can reduce the emission by a fixed number relative to a particular date in the past. And the main objective of submitting NDC is to prevent global temperature rise beyond 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2 degrees Celsius by the end of this particular strategy. The major differences between the recent strategy and NDC of India is that while NDC basically deals with the concrete targets where it clearly defines that this is what our strategy should be, this is what our emission target should be, or this is the number by how, by how much we will try to reduce the carbon emission. On the other hand, if we talk about the recent developed recently unveiled strategy, it is qualitative in nature and only describes a pathway while in the NDC the concrete targets are clearly established. So this is the difference between NDC and the current strategies. Now despite the successes that has been achieved in the recent climate change negotiation, there obviously are some hurdles that we see developing mainly between the developed countries and the developing countries. The one of the most outstanding questions that is kind of act, there is kind of a gap between these two group of countries are on the subject of climate finance. In this regard, it was year 2009 when developed countries taking the responsibility of global warming, taking the responsibility of their contribution to the climate change have placed 100 billion dollars that has to be given to the developing countries by year 2020. However, if you look at the actual target, only one third of the committed 100 billion dollar has been transferred to the developing countries and that is why this is a kind of, we can understand, a discontent among this group of people, this group of countries. Similarly, the other discontent element is that even those climate finance that has been given or shared with the developing countries, they are either in the form of loan or they are, there are some sort of conditions that has been achieved in them, uh, that has been actually put into that. So, it makes it very, very difficult for the developing countries to utilize this particular fund. Now, despite that, some progress has been achieved in this regard. And recently, in this particular summit, the parties have agreed to define a new collective quantified goal. So, what is this new quant collective quantified goal? In that, in this particular goal, the parties have agreed that before year 2025, parties shall set a new collective quantified goal from a floor of USD 100 billion per year 
taking into account the needs and priorities of the developing country similarly the other contribution or other important we can say progress has been made in the area of loss and damage now loss and damage is where the compensation has to be paid by the developed countries to developing countries is basically a small island developing state who are most vulnerable as far as the climate change global warming and the result of the sea level rise that will happen due to global warming and that is why who so ever are facing the brunt of climate change for the damage that already has incurred for example sea level has all risen in last 50 years in last 60 years so some island countries their area has become submerged they have problems of rehabilitation and displacement so to tackle these problems there was a pledge and there was announcement that a special separate loss and damage fund will also be instituted and the later on the money will be transferred from developed countries to the developing economies so what we can say in conclusion that as far as the European Union is concerned, in this particular climate negotiation, what we have seen that they are pressing very hard for the countries such as China, countries who are belonging to the Arab world, as well as the large developing countries, including India, to contribute on the grounds that they were the large emitters. If we talk about as far as the climate finance is concerned, the climate finance, the basis of climate finance was common but differentiated responsibilities where the major responsibility of climate change lies on the shoulder of developed countries because they industrialize first and after that almost 50 60 100 years later other countries have started or begin to industrialize and due to this uh, pressure of european union to uh, put pressure on the developing economies larger developing economies will already open up a fresh occasion for acrimony whenever we have future cops future conference of parties meeting are scheduled and also because if you try to understand only one third of the pledge contribution climate finance has reached to the developed countries and that also if you talk about loss and damage fund that has been uh, placed that will also take many years before actually it can meaningfully operate so these are the things that we have to keep in mind when we talk about overall what has been success what is the failure and where we are having acrimony between the two different uh, economies in the world so i hope you understood about the concept of this particular topic so if you like the video, please hit the like button, share it to your fellow aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more helpful content. Thank you very much.